you could probably make a pretty good argument that one of the interesting changes that happens in 20th century cartography is a new era of inclusion where voices and cultures that hadn't had that same access and a chance to give their perspective all of a sudden get a chance to be involved. Um, I love today's conversation is with Fam Bakfi. Uh, his is an amazing story of uh, leaving in the fall of his homeland of Vietnam in the 70s, uh, making it to America, acclimating and being one of the ones that documents the growth of this new industry in Silicon Valley. On today's program, Pham Bak Phi. Coming from Vietnam uh, in the 70s, uh, I don't think a lot of people can really appreciate uh, the backdrop of um, hardship and fear and uh, almost panic um, that mm. happened when things changed. Um, okay. Was your family from Saigon? Yes, we all from Saigon. Okay, and what was uh, what did what was the family business, or what did people do in your family? Oh, my uh, my uh, my uh, my father is work of uh, French uh, ambassador ambassador. Oh wow! Okay, okay. Yeah, and I have some uh, influence French uh, culture. Okay. Okay. But I uh, I I go to a school only in Vietnamese. Okay. And after high school, uh, I go to uh, University of uh, Architecture in Saigon. Um, yes. So, how old are you in 1975? 1975. In that time, I uh, well, actually, uh, after one year in uh, University of Saigon. I uh, participate uh, Navy, Vietnamese Navy. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, awesome. and after six year uh, service upon the sea and things, uh, I was sent back to University of uh, Architecture to keep on my uh, my study mm. to uh, become architect and working for Navy for Vietnamese Navy. So uh, you studied in architecture. How did you like it? Did you have a focus that you worked on? Oh, I love that. I love architectural design a lot mm. because it combines uh, art and uh, the technical. Yeah. And uh, in there, I learned sculpture. I learned painting. I learned drawing, all kind, and, of course, architectural design technically. Mm. So you you develop a real strong three dimensional sense. You vo you probably oh, exactly yeah yeah yes, you yes. probably always had skills and could draw, but it's when it came to architecture school that that's when it's all of a sudden you start branching into a whole lot of dimensions at once. That's interesting. Okay. So yes yeah exactly. When did uh, when did the family decide to come to America and how did that occur? Oh, we lucky. We uh, my family is very lucky. We have uh, my. Uh, my oldest, my elder brother's wife working for a uh, American ambassador. Mm. So uh, she can uh, make all kind of papers. So she bring whole my family to uh, escape from Saigon mm. then. So we are very lucky. Yeah. So uh, uh, your elder brother gets connection. Uh, the paperwork begins to happen. And the next thing you find out is, oh, this is going to work, and we're going to be able to leave. Um, how did, yeah. How did so actually, uh, my my elder brother uh, wife. Ah, uh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she worked for a uh, uh, for Dow D O W N something Dow mm. Dow. Oh, chemical. Okay. Okay. Um, how did how did you feel about that? Oh, very bad in that time. Oh, everything's yeah disturbed. Mm. But anyway, that's a bad story. Everything's gone already. Mm. So it was. Uh, did you look at the change of going to America in a positive way, or was it just a big tumultuous change? Oh, both way, both way. We lost my country somehow, mm. but uh, on the other side, we have a chance to go to American. Mm -hmm. to America, so everybody dreams to be there, to learn something new and develop uh, his own life, something. And so the time comes, and um, you're ready to go. What did you take with you? Uh, just a few 
souvenir photo and very few. Uh, I bring along some uh, photo for souvenir, mm -hmm. and, and I think that's it. Wow. And We the, cannot bring along a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So it was the clothes you had on, some photos, and you're, yeah, getting, clothes, and you're getting on a yeah, plane. Yeah, some clothes. Yes. Yeah, some clothes. And we fly. Mm -hmm. We fly. So we're very lucky. And we go uh, we go out of Saigon Skyda very easy mm -hmm. because we have all kind of privilege. And so uh, did you land? Where did you, where did you fly into when you left Saigon? Uh, we fly to uh, the 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 island. Oh, a long time ago. Oh. Well, I, I actually uh, uh, I forgot the name of the 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 into Guam. Uh, the island. Oh, okay. And then we uh, we go to uh, Arkansas uh, camp. Wow. We go to Arkansas camp and stay there for uh, maybe uh, look like uh, two months. Okay. And then I, we, my family was sponsored, and we go to uh, uh, Oklahoma City. Wow. Okay. And then myself, I go to San Francisco because I have some friend there, and I go there to uh, because Oklahoma City is a very uh, quiet city. Yeah. And don't think anything for uh, for my education or something. So I have a friend in San Francisco, and uh, I take a bus. After a couple of months working hard as a bus boy in Oklahoma City and so on, and we go to San Francisco. Wow! And from there, I got a job, and everything changed, and my life becomes stable. So, uh, you after that long journey, you're in Arkansas, then you're in Oklahoma, then uh, a connection with friends uh, in San Francisco brings you out to the Bay Area. How how did it feel? What was it like? Me? Yeah. What I feel in there? Yeah. Oh, very complicated. First mm. thing, very sad mm. and very lonely because I lost my country and I in San Francisco by myself. But uh, eventually, I I got a lot of new friends and also Vietnamese like me and a new friend who live in San Francisco. And after I got a job, so everything will become stable and mm. better and better. And uh, well, actually, I would like to tell you something. When I was in San Francisco by myself, mm. the first month, I'm thinking about a fine art painting. Mm. And I did paint that painting. I named the painting is uh, Unspeakable Rancor. Mm. That means I lost my country in very bad situation. We fight hard. A lot of things happen in, in uh, uh, internationally yeah. politics, and we lost my country. Yeah. And I did paint a painting. And in that time, I knew in the city, so I don't know where is where. Mm -hmm. So uh, I have uh, some money. I bring along Vietnamese money. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking uh, I make a collage from that kind of money. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And you know what? I tear the money out. I burn it up. And I stick on a hot board. Mm. And after collage done, I uh, touch up with black paint. Mm. And finally, that's become a uh, first painting that I paint in... Uh, in America, United States. So, out of the that terrible sense of loss and everything coming apart, and being in this mm -hmm. crazy, weird, foreign place, you take whatever fragments you had left, you tear it up, mm -hmm. you make art out of it, and you make something new. Yes. Wow. Yes. Okay. So, you start doing some basic jobs in the Bay Area. Even though you have experience as an architect, you had experience doing art, it was still you had to start at the bottom and begin working up again. Um, how did that yeah, go? Yeah. Oh, pretty uh, pretty uh, easy for me because uh, I'm working hard, first thing. Yes. I know how I learn English a lot when I was in Saigon. Ah. So everything become easy for me. And the thing is, to learn something new, to uh, 
uh, update everything, and uh, we merge to the new life. Hmm. Easy for me. Did you feel uh, in coming in uh, and starting over, did you feel support and find support in the Vietnamese community, or did you just try and start over altogether with a new identity and just forge on however you could? Oh, in that time, uh, the government have a, a plan for the uh, refugee. Mm -hmm. So uh, the plans are good. They help me a lot. They find me a job. Mm. They teach me new things, how to make resume, how to get into new interview, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So the government help is real good. Wonderful. And slowly that turned into better and better jobs. Uh, how, exactly. How soon was it that you were at Intel? Oh, how soon? Oh, uh, take a take a while. Mm. Uh, I live in San Francisco, and I work for a company in San Leandro as a as a draftsman first. Wow. Okay. Yeah, and then I changed a job as a graphic designer for a company new Uniplan. I remember mm. Uniplan. The company do all kind of. Uh, uh, technical book for many companies like uh, uh, IBM, Intel, you know, a lot of company. And from that company, I have a notion about the new technology uh, company. Mm. And at that time, that time is a very early year of uh, silicon uh, uh, industry. Yeah. Um, so you're new to the country. And you end yes. up in this totally new industry that's new to the country as well. Was it a, mm -hmm. was it a comfortable situation? Um, did it make sense? Uh, uh, if uh, in that case, I can tell. Mm. To me, I always update to new situation easily. Ah. That's my own uh, characteristic. But uh, my friend, all around, I see all around. They all have a hard time. Mm. Yes, they work hard in the odd job. Mm -hmm. And uh, many working like a bus boy or an odd job. But most of them go back to school. A lot of my friends go back to school. Mm -hmm. And they learn, they learn. And after a while, all of them become good. All of them adapt to the new life. Mm. Pretty good. Yes, yes, yes. But the, that's my uh, yeah yeah that that's my view in that time. But the faster that you can adapt and the faster that you can just keep going, the better things will be. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. That's a great life lesson. That's a great life lesson. So now we know you <laughs> for a particular work that you did, and I think you did a series uh, throughout the early 1990s that looked at Silicon Valley and documented the area, specific companies. How did the project mm -hmm. come to you? How did you get involved in it? Oh, 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 yes. In that time, uh, I'm work for for uh, I've been working for uh, Intel for five years as a graphic designer, mm. and uh, I have some friends who know and uh, who also work in that uh, area, so they know me and you know my work. Ah. And one of them work for a company. I don't remember the name, but that company have a big project. Mm. That means new idea to create a Silicon Valley map. Mm. And they try to find a, a lot of artists, but nobody can do it. Mm. Until my friend uh, introduced uh, me to the owner of that company. And uh, I think that's the lady. And she said, wow, you was born to do this job. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, and I make them scared, and she liked it a lot. So uh, we talk, and we discuss everything, and, you know, everything come up easy. So it, it's clear that you have a great ability when it comes to painting and when it comes to color use, uh, marker, etc. Do you remember how you initially did the Silicon Valley maps? Was it something that you painted out and then overlaid the logos and things on? Yeah, yeah. I have the, you know, I'm sitting down and thinking, and to me, it's everything's, you know, up here. It's easy. Mm. The first thing, I take the real map of Silicon Valley, mm -hmm. and I note what is the main uh, freeway, 
what is the big landscape, uh, landmark, mm -hmm. everything, and I make a sketch over whole view of the Silicon Valley. And then I talk to the guy, say, uh, uh, provide me all logo of the company and uh, your customer. And then with the address, mm -hmm. and then I mark where is where, and I stick their logo in there. And the first thing, the sketch is a very small, but after that, I make a big, big, on, I mean, the real uh, sign uh, of the map. Yeah. I mean, the big one, like the map you have now. And then I study everything from there and develop mm -hmm. drawing mixed cat, drawing pencil first. And then after done, I put a mila on that and draw in ink. And uh, let's see. Uh, it's not mila. It's, I think that's, uh, um, oh, Bristol paper. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. the Bristol, Bristol paper. Yeah. And I, yeah, I, I ink it and then I, uh, colored that and overall, then I stick their logo on exactly the point of the, that company. That's done. It's beautiful work and it, it did the job and it was successful. Were there any other Silicon Valley maps that you were aware of that kind of influenced you or that you had referenced? Uh, I don't remember. Okay. But. Okay. But but that that doesn't matter to me because um, I can imagine a, a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> that comes in handy. That comes in handy. Yeah, and yeah, it, and it yeah. does. It has a different perspective. Uh, the composition and the perspective of uh, the view itself is different than ones that had come before. Yeah. That's why I was kind of curious if there was anything else that was an influence. So, do you, about how many of these did you do? Was there just one? And then they updated, or did you do many different instances of it? No, uh, I do. I think I do two years. Okay. The first year, the first year, uh, the company is not not that much. Mm. But the second year, that what you have now is a crowder. So yeah. more company join the project, and uh, look like the company I work for then make a lot of profit. And I think after that, they screw up and they cannot make that map uh, anymore. Hmm. And another company jumping in and they change the style. They hire the helicopter and shoot a picture of all the company. Hmm. I think that's a bad idea. And after that, the, the Silicon Valley map uh, lose that the first original uh, interesting and it become a different way. Yeah. And everything fit out. Yeah, I think you're right. I think, especially when you think of Silicon Valley, you think of how place really became connoted with a company, and yes, and it wasn't it wasn't about uh, buildings or anything along those lines. If you were doing you know this photo view, it was more about the logo really became the perception of who had influence and and who was someplace. Yes. So yeah, the connection was always that. Yeah, that's a really interesting point. I hope you enjoyed the chance to hear from Fran Bakfi. This is just a portion of the conversation. I wish we had more time. Perhaps maybe someday in the future we will. Thank you so much for listening. Feel free to contact us if you have any questions and we'll catch you in the next one.